If you've ever wondered why Cardano, despite its groundbreaking achievements, has never really been afforded the same amount of exposure or praise amongst the crypto media or pro-blockchain communities, you have to go right back to its very beginnings. Narratives are formed by the rich and powerful. The majority of coins are VC-backed, where a small group of individuals end up owning a large amount of the distribution. These same actors own the media outlets, whether that be directly or indirectly, and in turn the few protect their investments by propagandizing the minds of the many. In the case of Cardano, their fair distribution model in Japan was the polar opposite to this. None of the VCs in Silicon Valley or Europe were able to get rich off the initial offering. Therefore, they have no incentive, interest or desire to present Cardano in a positive light. Whilst the efforts to suppress Cardano are wide scale, this has been the very enabler for it to form the community we are part of today. A community that's ever growing, educated on blockchain, and extremely passionate about the tech development and mission statement. This is organic, and it's that fair distribution that's been the key driver for this. Cardano has been operating now without failure for nearly five years. During this time, IOG have seamlessly been able to implement major protocol changes that its users didn't even notice, with another about to occur imminently. It's living proof that, using research, math and science, a secure proof-of-stake blockchain can be created that doesn't need to be rebooted is extremely difficult to attack and able to constantly evolve to stay ahead of the competition. Soon enough we will see a major shift in the way we value blockchains, where projects are valued on real-world adoption, the tech and utility it delivers. When this time comes and we look at the strategy being implemented and assess all the fundamentals, in my opinion it's Cardano that will prove to be blockchain's most valuable player. Welcome back for today's instalment of Cardano Insights, delivering a fast-paced bite-sized roundup of the all-important Cardano news and ecosystem content from the past 72 hours. So join me as I explore exactly what's been happening at the very pulse of Cardano. So let's get straight into it. Now the road to mass adoption requires a blockchain to be highly inclusive, ensuring a user's barrier to entry is low, and the removal of as many potential roadblocks that makes the process in accessing, navigating, and in turn benefiting from its utility is paramount to achieving this. Now with thoughts on increasing the number of users on the Cardano blockchain, on Friday we were reminded of another game-changing approach that's being implemented by IOG that's going to go a long way in making it the most inclusive option out there in the blockchain space. In this video released on the IOHK YouTube channel, we got a greater insight into the introduction of Babel fees via limited liabilities, which gave us some food for thought on how impactful this is going to be when thinking of attracting both new users and builders on the Cardano blockchain. Babel fees are a mechanism designed by IOG that will in effect enable users to pay transaction fees in non-ADA tokens. This means currently, at the minimum, a user will need to hold some ADA to interact or transact on the Cardano blockchain. For example with DEXs or DeFi protocols, NFT metaverses and or gaming platforms. So basically anything that requires the signing of a transaction, and this is because the proof of stake consensus algorithm relies on this. But this isn't specific to Cardano, all blockchains require gas fees to be paid in the layer 1 token when transacting. Cardano Babel fees solve this problem and give Cardano a significant edge for adoption. By allowing users to pay transaction fees in currencies they already hold, Cardano simplifies the user experience and creates that much needed flexibility required for an ecosystem that's aiming for ultimate inclusivity. Once implemented, users will be able to pay the fees for any transaction using the native token of their choice which also includes native assets that have been bridged over from other blockchains, which means in effect a user from another chain could bridge over wrapped assets, interact and transact with a protocol on the Cardano blockchain without having to hold any ADA in addition to their favoured native asset or stablecoin. Once a transaction is signed using only non-ADA tokens, it creates a limited liability on their ledger, creating a process where the transaction fee associated with it needs to get swapped from the native token used to ADA in order to reward the staple operator for processing the transaction. This will further open up new marketplaces that will essentially need to facilitate those swaps in order for the new transaction to execute. Now you may be thinking who would want to facilitate such swaps of other native tokens to cover the ADA fee. For example, to entice a response here, the transaction will offer some amount of tokens to whoever covers the liability. This suggests a spot trade between ADA and the offered tokens at a certain exchange rate. Consider now a block producer that sees this transaction. The block producer can then create a matching transaction absorbing the liability, covering it with ADA, as well as claiming the tokens that are on offer. By extending the ledger rules, the transaction with the liability, as well as its matching transaction, become admissible to the ledger as a group. 
Due to the absorption of the liability, the set of two transactions become properly priced in ADA as a whole, and hence it does not break the ledger's bookkeeping rules in terms of ADA fees. As a result, the transaction with the liability settles, achieving exactly what Babel fees are set out to do. Users can submit transactions priced in any tokens they possess, and providing a block producer is willing to take them up on the spot trade, have them settle in the ledger as regular transactions. Whilst the work on Babel fees is not a finished article, and as outlined in this video, they are working through a few potential solutions like publishing transactions in completed batches off-chain, or instructing relay nodes that have opted in to accept such transactions with certain liabilities, when Babel fees becomes a reality, it's going to be a game changer in driving adoption, improving the utility and further cementing it as the most inclusive blockchain in existence. I've linked an article and the video on Babel fees in the description if you want to take a deeper dive. And as always, as soon as there's more developments here, I'll be sure to keep you updated on all the progress. Now check out this massive NFT sale of a legendary Aquafarmer NFT. This recently sold on JPEG store for 45,000 ADA, or just over $21,000. The reason I'm highlighting this is just to serve as a little reminder of how far the NFT space on Cardano has come in a short period of time. At the point of minting, I believe you were whitelisted by holding a minimum of 1LQ tokens at the time of the snapshot, then you would have been eligible to take part in the mint of up to three Aquafarmer NFTs for just 44 ADA each. One of the drivers behind the price for this NFT is the utility it holds. Liquid DAO's implementation of the V2 Agora governance module will include functionality to stake Aquafarmer NFTs in the safety pool alongside LQ for increased yields. Depending on the Aquafarmer NFT rarity, holders would access increased staking rewards anywhere from between 2-5%, to Staking rewards will be generated from the 10% of the protocol revenue set aside for LQ stakers as part of the net margin. Now we've covered on numerous occasions the large NFT sales on this channel, but I think this one gives us a great insight to how it would seem on Cardano, the NFT scene is seemingly the polar opposite to what we find say on Ethereum, where the barriers to entry are riddled with high gas fees for both successful and unsuccessful transactions, not to mention the initial mint prices that are often in the thousands of dollars. The NFT scene on Cardano is maturing into a real inclusive and valuable ecosystem. More often than not, NFT mints are extremely cheap in comparison, on average only 50 to 100 ADA. However, this hasn't or prevented the secondary market from flourishing, as we've seen with Space Buds, The Ape Society, Clay Nation, Chilled Kongs and many other NFT projects. What I really liked about seeing this sell is the fact that it's a utility NFT, and I think it gives us some insight on how this marketplace is going to mature as more and more users place value on utility rather than just pure speculation. Now I'm no developer but I'm always eager to learn or at least try and improve my understanding of the steps being taken to improve the developer experience that will in turn lead to more adoption and builders coming over to the Cardano blockchain. Check this out from Michelle Harmonic. In this tweet writes, I have the honor to show you the first ever untyped Plutus core program entirely generated and serialized using only TypeScript. This ultimately proves that PluTS, which is the name given to Plutus TypeScript smart contracts, is not only a cool idea, but a project that can't wait to improve the Cardano smart contract development experience. So PluTS is a project that wants to allow smart contracts and transaction creation only using TypeScript, allowing developers to build dApps that are able to run entirely client-side, resulting in truly decentralized applications, all without sacrificing what Cardano smart contracts can offer. Currently, this is a proposal raised for Catalyst funding in Fund9, and I thought it was an interesting item demonstrating the efforts being undertaken in the community to improve the developer experience. If you are interested to read more, I've linked the Catalyst proposal below in the description. Now, a week or so ago, we covered Book Token, Endmaker, and the book release of Cardano for the Masses. Initially, the book was only available on Amazon, then thanks to Endmaker Pay, you can now purchase the book using ADA, and in turn receiving the NFT that provides a PDF version. Well, since the recent release of Book Token's first decentralized encrypted asset in the minting of the Gutenberg Bible, it seems you will soon be able to get your very own copy of Cardano for the Masses in ebook form. This means you'll be able to own a completely decentralized version in the form of an NFT and connect your wallet to the DAP reader to enjoy. I really like what they've done with the book cover here, with this real cool illustration seemingly depicting the masses migrating to a Cardano utopia. It's great to see the progress Book Token are making in their efforts to roll out more ebooks, building out the decentralized library, and increasing the utility. From what I understand, the minting and payment will be handled by Endmaker, with more details to be released this week. When I think about Book Token and what they're trying to achieve here, and look at the market size of ebooks sold globally each year, 
combining this with the decentralized ownership it offers, if successful, is going to be a recipe for a huge level of user activity, all being made possible on the Cardano blockchain. So that's it for another installment of Cardano Insights, as we keep track of all of its development progress and spread those positive Cardano vibes. I hope you enjoyed today's video and found value in the content, and if you did, then please be sure to comment, share, like, and subscribe to the channel. We'll be back soon with your daily roundup, and until then, thanks for watching, have a great day, and as always, keep it Cardano.